Season 2 of True Detective is set in Vinci, California, where the seasoned criminal Frank Simeon is attempting to use his money and political connections to expand his empire. Frank has many cops on his payroll, including Detective Ray Velcoro, who found himself in Frank's pocket after Frank delivered to Ray the man who assaulted Ray's wife years prior. Ray killed his wife's abuser, though their marriage ended. And now Ray is unsure of whether his son Chad is biologically his or his wife's abuser, but nevertheless uses Frank's resources to fight for custody of his son. Just before a pivotal meeting with Russian businessman Osip Agronov, Frank's business partner city manager Ben Casper goes missing. Agronov refuses to work with anyone but Casper, so Frank sends Ray to find his missing partner. Meanwhile, Highway Patrol Officer Paul Woodruff is falsely accused of misconduct and suspended from the force. Struggling with PTSD from his time in the military, stuck in a loveless relationship with his girlfriend Emily due to his repressed sexuality, and now suspended from work, Paul rides off into the night on a death wish, before stumbling upon the body of Casper, whose eyes have been burned out with acid. Ray and fellow Vinci detective Teague Dixon are assigned with County Detective Andy Bazzaretti's to investigate the murder, and Paul assists in the investigation in the hopes of helping to salvage his career. As the group begin their investigation, Annie is secretly instructed by her boss to keep an eye on Ray, as he is suspected of being corrupt. Ray works closely with Frank on the investigation, and the criminal entrepreneur is furious that Casper died while in possession of $5 million that belonged to Frank but was now missing. As the detectives begin their investigation, they discover that Casper was working closely with Vinci Mayor Chisani's good-for-nothing son, Tony. With more connections between local politicians and criminals being discovered, Frank's empire is on the verge of collapse, leading to his marriage with his wife Jordan becoming strained. Frank then attempts to make up for his lost money by going into business with a cartel to run drugs through his casino. Meanwhile, Paul runs into an old friend Miguel from his time in the military in a private security firm known as Black Mountain. Paul and Miguel previously had a sexual relationship which they secretly restart. Despite this, Paul proposes to his girlfriend after finding out that she is pregnant. Elsewhere, Ray tries to get closer to Annie to discover what kind of evidence the county currently has on him. The team of detectives then discover that a prostitute Irina had stolen items from Casper's home before his death, and so they set up a raid on her pimp Amarilla's warehouse to retrieve the possible evidence. During the raid, a shootout occurs, killing many officers, including Dixon. The warehouse, which is actually a meth lab, explodes from the gunfire. Amarilla escapes the shootout and is chased by the cops through Vinci streets, killing many innocent civilians in the process before Ray and Paul manage to kill him. Several months later, the Casper case has been closed after what is now called the Vinci Massacre, with Amarilla being charged for Casper's murder. Annie has been relegated to evidence lockup, Paul has been promoted to detective, and Ray has quit the force, now working for Frank directly. When the corrupt Attorney General Geldof, who has ties to Frank's criminal organization, plans on running for governor, his colleague Catherine Davis reopens the Casper case and tasks Ray, Annie, and Paul to find the true killer and their connection to the various corrupt political figures. In the reopened investigation, Paul learns that one of the items stolen from Casper's home were blue diamonds that Dick Dixon had secretly attempted to find before his death. Looking into the diamonds, Paul discovers that they were originally stolen in 1992 by the former cop Casper, Chief of Police Holloway, Holloway's right-hand man Lieutenant Burris, and the corrupt Dixon. After the diamonds were stolen, the Vinci Massacre was actually orchestrated by the corrupt police officers to ensure Dixon's death and silence. Annie then infiltrates a massive sex party hosted by the mayor's son, Tony, where she sees many corrupt political figures in attendance, including Geldof and Chief Holloway. Meanwhile, Paul sneaks into Agronov's office and discovers that the Russian businessman is secretly working with Tony, Geldof, and the corrupt police officers, and they have set up Frank to cut him out of their business deals. Ray goes to give Davis evidence of their findings, but is shocked to discover that she has been murdered. Ray then tells Frank about their findings, and the crime boss realizes that his entire empire 
has turned on him. Ray, Annie, Paul, and Frank realize that they are now all in grave danger for uncovering so much of the conspiracy. Frank sends his wife Jordan to safety in Venezuela, then burns down his casino so that his backstabbing allies can't steal it from him. When he goes to confront Mayor Chassani, Frank discovers that he has also been murdered. Annie and Paul get their families out of the city, and Annie turns to Ray for comfort, leading to the two having sex. Paul then starts receiving blackmail messages threatening to expose his relationship with Miguel. Paul meets with his blackmailer, who is revealed to be Chief Holloway, aided by the security team for hire Black Mountain. Holloway demands that Paul turn over all of the evidence that implicates him in the various crimes and cover-ups, but Paul refuses and flees. Paul manages to kill all of his former Black Mountain squad mates, but moments before making it to safety, he is gunned down by Lieutenant Burris. Ray and Annie then discover that none of the corrupt Vinci politicians had anything to do with Casper's death and that the murderers were actually the siblings Laura and Lenny, seeking revenge for the deaths of their parents in the original 1992 Blue Diamond robbery. Ray meets with Holloway and tricks him into confessing his crimes on a wire, but Lenny then attacks the corrupt chief of police. Annie and Burris both arrive to intervene, turning the scene into chaos resulting in the wire being destroyed and Holloway and Lenny being killed. With hopes of a legal resolution now seemingly gone, Ray, Annie, and Frank meet up to formulate a final plan. Frank urges Annie to flee to Venezuela, while he and Ray stay in Vinci to settle scores. The duo attack a business meeting and kill many of their rivals, including Agronov, and steal $12 million which they split between themselves. Unfortunately, Frank is then captured by the cartel, who threaten to kill him if he doesn't give them the money. The prideful Frank refuses to cooperate and is fatally stabbed and left for dead in the desert. Meanwhile, Ray knows he is being hunted by his various enemies, and his continued survival will only put his family in danger. And so he says goodbye to Chad, who unbeknownst to Ray is confirmed by a paternity test to in fact be his biological son, and then accepts his fate. Ray engages in a last stand against Burris and a team of hitmen who gun him down. In the end, Burris evades any consequences for his actions, Tony Chisani succeeds his father as mayor of Vinci, Geldof is elected governor of California, and Frank's business plans successfully go through without his involvement, making his enemies even richer. Some time later, Annie is now living in Venezuela with Jordan and has given birth to Ray's child. Annie delivers all of the evidence she has compiled with Ray and Paul to a journalist, hoping it will be enough to make a difference and eradicate the corruption in Vinci.